Okay, today I'm just gonna give you one exercise and a progression, but one exercise I give my patients with back pain and spinal instability, core stability issues, I give them all the time, and I just haven't done a video on it. So today, I'm doing a video on it so you guys can see what I teach those clients. It's called the fallout. Now, many people do this in Pilates. We do it in the physio clinic to try and get our base level of brain to pelvic floor and transverse abdominis to create an environment of spinal stability to build upon. So it's one of the first exercises we give people, especially when they're in acute pain or they've got some real dysfunctions going on, to try and get them started. So this is what you do. Start on your back in a crook line position. It's the best way for you to do this exercise because you're in an unloaded spinal position. So if you're also someone who's got acute back pain, this really helps being in this position. Make sure whenever you do something like this or the knee float or leg float, if you want to call it, where you're raising one leg up, another one of our ones that are early on, that you are in a neutral spine here. So that means you are not arched off the floor, the big hole in your back. You're not tucked under and flattened in your back here and trying to suck your belly button or imprint your spine. You are staying in a halfway between neutral position. Then you're gonna have better access. One, it keeps your spinal in a neutral position, it's nice and stable, nice and happy. Better access to engage your transverse abdominis if it's a neutral, okay? So from here, like with all these exercises, you are going to try and tell your brain to activate your pelvic floor by holding a wee. So in that position there, I want you to gently think about, if I was going to the toilet, I want to hold a wee, okay? Now for you, if that activates your tummy here and tightens you up, then great. Some people, it doesn't. Some people have to really think about holding a wee quite a bit, and they still don't get anything here. So if you've got your hands on the inside of your ASIS like that, and you're feeling what your abdominals are doing, that deepest layer where your hands are down there, and you activate your pelvic floor and nothing comes up against your fingers. I don't mean a bulge and push out. I mean, if there's no rise and tone against your fingers, then maybe you haven't got a very connection. You might have to add on the idea of what we call a drawstring. So if you're lying there and you imagine there's a string between one side of your pelvis and the other side of the pelvis, and if you had a knot or a bow in the middle of that, and I sort of pulled on that, it would pull the two pelvic bones together. Of course, it doesn't happen. But if you can imagine like these two sides coming together in the middle, what you're trying to envisage is that tra contraction of transverse abdominis, which is going transversely, all right? So you can imagine like I'm trying to contract together. I'm not trying to suck my belly button down. I don't want you to sort of try and hollow out here. I also don't want you to push out, okay, or hold your breath. You're trying to think pelvic floor, okay, holding a wee, and then if you need a little bit more, tightening that way, okay? Then you've got transverse abdominis and your pelvic floor together. That is gonna give you a base of stability here. The other thing you wanna try and focus on, this is all set up, remember, is making sure you're not flaring at the ribs like that and seeing these sort of rib wings coming out like this. You want this and this a little bit closer together. So you're trying to keep that down a little bit before you switch on pelvic floor and transverse abdominis. Now, if you've got that, it should feel like a tight trampoline in the front here. You should still be able to breathe at the same time. All right? So focusing on this part for stability and this part for breathing. Breathing's happening up here. Try not to let your tummy go up and down with the breath. Okay, and That's for when you're resting and sleeping. When you're training like this, we want this stable. You want your breathing here. Now that's all just set up. You think, gosh. That's quite a lot, right? But I need you to have that set up before you do anything else because otherwise it's almost a little bit pointless. You need to make sure you have all the muscles here to engage, to give you that spinal stability because I'm gonna challenge it. The fallout is challenging your ability to maintain the pelvis and your ribs connected together, okay? It's to stop them twisting apart like that. So here's the exercise. If I'm gonna keep say this leg stable, my right leg still, 
I'm going to fall out my left leg. So keeping my heels on the ground, I want to engage in here, hold a wee, engage my pelvic floor, get my transverse abdominis connecting here so everything feels nice and solid and I'm breathing. My right leg staying still, my left leg is slowly going to move out to the side. Okay, I don't have to go very far, I just want to challenge it a little bit and then bring it back. If I don't have things on here, what's going to happen is the weight of my leg and the movement in the hip here is going to start rocking my pelvis to the left. Okay, So I'm trying to keep these muscles engaged so my pelvis does not move left or right. Okay, I also don't want that leg to move either. So I'm trying to keep that leg stable. But if I'm going to be moving just my left leg, my left leg goes into abduction, falls out to the side. And so I'm using a bit of groin muscle here to hold it and then bring it back, of course. And you're trying to minimize the movement that's going on here. I don't want to see when your left leg goes out the side, your pelvis rotating to the left, even a little bit. Right? You're trying to aim for minimal movement. Now, some people might run out of range in the hip. And of course, when they get to a certain point, it's going to roll anyway. So you don't have to go all the way out. Some people might have a limited range in their hips. But regardless, if you can think about your pelvis down here being a boat in the water, okay? So if you let one leg go out the side, that's like a man or woman leaning out of the boat. It's going to tip it, okay? So your job is to use all these muscles here to stop my pelvis tipping over to the left and then come back again and not correct, auto-correct here. And then once you've done a few to the left, you then go to the right, okay, maybe three or four there. Let it relax. Make sure you haven't lost your neutral spine. Reset, get your ribs down, pelvic floor on, transverse abdominis on, and then think this thing's going to be stable this leg's floating out the side. The same things apply. When I go my right leg out to the side, I don't want my pelvis tipping over to the right, or the boat tipping over to the right. And then I go as far as I can that way, and then bringing it back this way, okay? And again, I'm trying to repeat real slow, out to the side, and then slowly coming back. And that is it. That is the exercise. And you might say, Tim, that is super boring. I know, it is. And the problem with these exercises is it's hard to make them any less boring than that. But the problem is, because they're so boring, they're not very compliant for you guys at home. But trust me, this is if you can get this done, this is the way that you're going to start reconnecting that pelvic floor and that transverse that you probably desperately need to give you your spinal stability and get rid of some of your back pain, but also build a foundation that you can progress from. Because if you don't have that, you what you're going to do is then compensate with your outer core by bracing quite a bit. Now you get away with that for a little bit with back pain and core strength, but then it breaks down again when you say sitting down, bending over, doing the dishes, that sort of stuff. Okay, you need that deep foundation. So I urge you to try and work on these exercises. What we're doing a video for is to try and get it so you can do it at home. Okay, so you can do repeat business at home. Like our clients do this at home. It's half the reason why I'm doing this video is for them. So when they go home, they're doing the same things I taught them in the clinic, all right, which gives them better results down the track. Now, I did say there's going to be progression on this. If you find being on the floor is nice and stable, you can get that done. You say, how do I make that harder? First thing I would do is not increase like load or anything like that. I'd make it more unstable. So you're challenging your ability to be keep stable. I'd do that with a foam roller. So you can either use this. Or you could use a yoga mat. So one or the other, it doesn't matter, as a yoga mat rolled up. Make that the thing you then lie on. Okay, so it's unstable. Now, if you look at the way that I've got that roller, if I go back into that position where I am thinking about not rocking the boat, I'm now on a really unstable boat, if you like, in the water. So when, if the disposition here, because as soon as I push my, or make my leg go out, to the, fall out to the side, my center of gravity is shifting off to the left. So I'm more likely to roll off the roller, all right? So you're gonna to have to work quite hard here now. Think about, okay, where's my neutral spine? Ribs, make sure they're not flaring out. And then pelvic floor on, holding a wee. And then 
a little bit of a pull and brace here with the transverse abdominis. So you've got sort of two things going on here. Then I've got to keep this leg stable. If you watch me, you'll see me waver a little bit. I'm going to go left leg out to the right, and I have to very carefully watch my counterbalancing here, because as soon as I want to tip left, I'm going to have to try and brace here a little bit and control it and work out how I'm not going to move myself on the roller like this. Right? So it's not a lot harder, it's just is harder trying to do the same exercise on an unstable surface. So there's my right side, I've got to be careful how far I go there, and then pull it back. Okay, So I'm tr trying to not work really hard, I'm just trying to make the exercise more difficult so I have to get a bit more brain power and a bit more coordination from here to there to keep that stability going. And the end of the day, doing these exercises, what are you doing? You're spending quite a long period of time activating deep core stabilizers, which reduces back spasm and back pain. Okay, so half the reason we get this to do for people is to calm down muscles that are going to spasm their back as part of why half they're getting the back pain, not just to get a strong and stable core. Okay, so it's a dual purpose one with this. Think of pain relief because it's helping reduce muscle spasm in the back and then longevity where you're getting deeper understanding of how your core works and you're getting stronger so you can layer upon that and build upon that so you can press further with your core strength and get further away from back pain. So that's the one, like I said, that's the one we give just about every single one of our clients in the clinic. You've finally got a video now. I hope that helps. I'll see you next time.